So here we are on our second. <laughs> here we are on our second. Uh, I think you need it on the outside, mate. Have I? No, you got it on the inside. Don't you, you need it on the outside. You can. <laughs> Great <laughs> recruitment. It's still on the inside. <laughs> There. We're there. Good. Right. So, number two. Oh, I just wanted to know how you felt the first one went and whether or not it was uh, of any use to anyone. I think it was, wasn't it? Well, we, I think we had some interesting feedback, didn't we? I think the sound quality, so hopefully our mics will make it better. And I think probably as much as we love the sound of our own voices, I think probably going on for 15 minutes was a bit long. Might have been. So I think if we can try and keep it down to five minutes, I'll put the timer on. The feedback was, I think. People thought you liked the sound of your own voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, so let's have a bit of a catch up. How was last week and what information do we have yeah. around talking to people and companies and how has it been? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing I've seen and talking to the guys and the team is it definitely seems busier. There again, seems to be more momentum in the market. I mean, probably if you think last week we picked up the first sort of project piece of contract resource that we've had yep. since the start of lockdown, which I think is a brilliant sign because I think looking at sort of previous sort of work, interim work, we've had a lot of it we were talking about in the last video was going from day rate, flicking back to fixed term contract. Yep. But I think actually companies now are coming out and going, right, a project that we had that we did put on hold actually we're now ready to start kicking that back off and we need some interim resource to come in and help us deliver that mm -hmm. so i think that's a great start and again if you were to look at the perm job flow that is definitely up this week mm -hmm. um, in terms of again companies it's now not just replacing somebody who's left it's okay look we need we're either growing or actually we're wanting to do this in the organization, so we need to bring this resource in house. So mm. the market's definitely feeling more confident, but I guess what are you seeing, and what's your opinion on the types of roles yep. that we're seeing come to market? So for me, I think what I'm noticing is organizations are still a little bit, un still there's a still lack of confidence around looking forward in a business and looking at Mm -hmm. potentially what they want to do. So if you think of all the business transformation type roles, the, like enterprise architecture type roles, they are quite sparse if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the roles that we're picking up now are individuals and organizations turning around and having a look at their organization and going, do you know what, is it fit for purpose? Is it, have we got everybody in post to make sure we're doing a great job yep. with the team that we've got. So infrastructure, mm -hmm. test kind of roles, security, I think mm -hmm. security is a big thing at the moment, what with Garmin and a yeah. few other big hacks that have happened. I think companies are realizing that's probably something that they need to shore up. Mm -hmm. So there is a real focus on the moment of organizations trying to get their companies up to speed and making sure that they've got the best of what they've got. So what else have we seen? In Engineering roles Engineering. as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. that's one of the big things. Yeah. And again, a mix now, because initially most of the engineering work we had was from startups and scale ups. Yeah. But again, a number of the roles now are starting to come through again from sort of larger enterprise businesses or just sort of true mid cap organizations, which mm -hmm. again, I think is a really good sign. And, and the market does seem to be gaining momentum and that there seems to be much more positivity out there. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see some organizations who are getting back in the office, maybe one or two days yeah. a week, which I think is hugely helping as well. Um, but I think the one interesting thing is one of the things you and I both talk about a lot with the clients is culture. Yeah. Um, and I know you were speaking to someone in particular this week and you might be thinking about doing a, a Tech Curious session yeah. around it. So we're going to try and set up a Tech Curious event with a, a, a lady called uh, Abigail Riley. She is an occupational, she's doing a degree in occupational psychology. So we had this conversation around how important culture is mm -hmm. because if you have a team that is quite dispersed and working mobile and you're looking to remote place people remotely in your organization how important is a culture what mm -hmm. what is culture what what does it look like because effectively you could get someone 
I don't know, you, you might have an organisation in Bristol and they appoint someone in Northumberland or wherever, Guildford or, or wherever, and they're doing a really great piece of work. Should they really be bothered about culture? Is it something that an organisation, you know, when they come to us, they must be all right, usually yeah, yeah. there must be a really good cultural fit. Well, what, how important is that now that you're onboarding people remotely? Do they need to be signed up to the culture? If they're doing a great job technically, yep. are they uh, are they really that is is that really important to go and find? Now it's it's a hypothetical question, and I'm playing devil's advocate. And I think Abigail and uh, one other person that will be on that webinar will start talking about the importance of culture in 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 remote working, yep. which will be useful actually. So we'll send that we'll send that yep. invite out. It will be useful for. I don't know, HR directors, people directors, mm -hmm. but also CIOs, yep. um, people that need to start thinking, perhaps we need to just tailor our culture mm -hmm. slightly so it works for the whole mobile yeah. mobile working yeah, it does. piece as well. And I think it will be, because again, it's not just, because I think you and I both saw it, his pre-COVID, a lot of the roles that were remote or sort of had more flexibility around home working were more sort of the senior end of the market. Yep. But again, you look at one of the roles we've got at the moment, it's kind of, a 27k support role and they can be based anywhere in the UK so I think that'll mm -hmm. be really interesting to see how one do you embed that person into your culture yep. or do you not even need to worry about that mm -hmm. but then how do you develop them how do you see them growing how do they yeah. get their next management role if they're working remotely so I think that'll be really interesting to hear on the tech career session to yeah. see how we build build that out absolutely I think it's been good. I think we've done yeah. it in six minutes, which is much better than our Brilliant. 15 minutes of I last week. Have we covered everything? I think so. Well, I think there's lots more so we can talk about. So, lifting there, roles, yeah. more confidence, a lot of contract work, yeah. a lot of work in engineering, tests, security, all of those kind of roles that are operationally important yeah. to businesses. I personally think by the end of Q4, Q1, we'll see an uplift in those kind of transformational type roles. Yep. But at the moment, you're going to have to keep your powder dry and, and wait for those type Definitely. of roles to come along. But I do think companies will no, no, want to be where they were. I agree. And I think the biggest takeaway from me this week is just the market seems much more positive. Yep. We've had our first interim project come through, yep. which is brilliant. And I think that's a massive sign of things starting to pick up. So yep. fingers crossed.